It's a bright new day here in the studio, and I welcome you to another edition of AAU Talks on your number one channel for higher education here in Africa, AAU TV, a channel dedicated to deliver relevant content on higher education in Africa. Every May 25th every year is dedicated or we celebrate as um, African Union Day, and that was I mean, last week Friday was AU Day. And uh, in the studio, I have two gentlemen, two distinguished gentlemen, who are here to talk about African Union, talk about the history, the purpose, and other relevant issues. We have Mr. Awa. He's a very, it's a face, a regular face here in the studio. He's a lecturer at the University of Professional Studies, Accra, and he's also the um, past Secretary General of the Association of African Students, New York. And I also have Mr. Ransford Bekwe, he is the project officer here in AAU. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. Thank How was your holiday? How did you spend it? Oh, very fine. Um, like um, all other Pan Africanists, I um, had a group discussion with I some see. other colleagues about past, present, and the future of the continent. Nice one. All right, before we go into the main topic, we'll be going on a break to look at, to listen to the AU anthem. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. Can you remember that you can join us on our on this AU Talks on our um, Facebook page at Association of African Universities. You can also join our um, Twitter handle on AAU uh, underscore sixty seven. Uh, Mr. Awa, you know when growing up in the primary school, in primary school it was compulsory if as in to know all international bodies, if not all, but at least major international bodies like the ECOWAS, the UN, OAU, when they were established and their functions, their headquarters and all that. And we will be looking at um, the OAU. Can you give us brief history of the OAU? Okay, the Organization <coughs> of African Unity, I think a number of pundits have discussed it over time. Okay. Uh, I want to take it, um, hinging back from the Black uh, Liberation Movement okay. uh, that uh, has its history to the uh, uh, Blacks in America and then the Caribbean. That is the issue of respecting the Black skin and the fact that we are able of what? We are capable of managing our oh, own affairs. So that is how the issue of Pan-Africanism began. Okay. Now, 
tying it to this discussion, I want to bring it back down to 1925, okay. when the West African Students' Union was formed in the United Kingdom, basically with two key objectives. The first was that they wanted the welfare of African students studying in Britain, because we had Nigerian, Ghanaian, Sierra Leone, Tunisia, and a number of students from different countries studying in, in Britain. But their welfare issues were not well taken care Kills. of by the British government. So the key issue was to look at the issue of their welfare. Yeah. And the second major issue was the fact that the West African Students' Union wanted to look at ways of liberating uh, African colonies that were under, under British, British rules. Yeah. So a name that comes <laughs> readily was uh, Solanke Ladipo of Nigerian origin sure. because there was the Nigerian National Union of Students. We have the Gold Coast Students Association, student unions from Sierra Leone and all of that. So they came together and formed the West African Students Union. Okay. Now, we would want to talk uh, uh, J.B. Dankwa, who became their first president, and then uh, uh, Ladipo himself, who became their first secretary general. Oh. So the union started conscientizing Africa. Okay. Okay. Going through the shores of Africa, especially West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, yeah. Sierra Leone, and conscientizing Africans about the need for what? Self-government. Okay, so that is the beginning. Fast forward to 1945. Okay. Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was also studying in the United Kingdom, became the vice president of the West African Students' Union. Mm -hmm. He was also privileged to be part of the organization of the Fifth Pan-African Congress in Manchester. There he met persons like Jomo Kenyatta, who would later become the president of what? Kenya. Mm. W.E. Du Bois. Uh, George Padmore, and a number of them. Okay, so that was the beginning of the struggle because like-minded people came together for the purposes of what? Dignifying the, the, black, the black race. Skin. In Kuma, within that period, had a call to come back home. That was in 1947. Come back home and join the United Gold Coast Convention. So he came. And he worked with them for a while, but the modus operandi of the United Gold Coast Convention did not sit well with Osage for okay. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah because they believed in independence, but gradually. Nkrumah believed in independence, but Take believed it. in it no. immediately. Okay. So in 1949, just two years after, after. He, he came back home, he, he, he formed the CPP, Convention Peoples Party, Party. Okay, which he led through which he led Ghana into independence in the year 1956, 57, 5th of March 1957. Now, when Hosajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah became the president of Ghana, the Pan-African ideology was boiling in him. So it wasn't only Ghana that he wanted to liberate, but the entire African Africa. continent. So his words were very pronounced. He said, and I remember, the independence of Ghana is meaningless until it's linked with the total liberation of the African continent, save March 1957. And that was the euphoria that went through the entire continent. So a year after, 1958, the African heads of states met in Ghana. That was in March, okay, to deliberate about the issues of the continent. Nine African states gathered here. That was in March. But there in March 1958, a Ugandan by the, by the name of John, uh, John Kali thought that the liberation of the African continent was not enough of only African heads of what? States. States. Yeah. So he, he proposed in April that there is the need for a broader meeting. Okay. A meeting of uh, trade unions, civil society organization, every group that had pan-African what? ideologies. Idea. So in December the same year, okay. they converged again under the name All African Peoples what? Pan Conference. Okay. So, confer Pan so Pan Africanists from all over what? The world. In okay. Africa and outside of what? Africa. Africa. They came together and deliberated on the issues of what? Africa. One name that was pronounced then was Emery Patrice Lumumba of Congo. Okay, he was a young intellectual and represented his country as the prime minister. So this now gave another impetus. Apart from African leaders, there were other groups that were interested in the issue of what? 
independence. independence okay. So this group stood, the AAPC, All African Peoples Conference. In 1960, they had their, conf uh, their second conference in uh, Tunis. And in 1961, they had another conference in what? Egypt. Now, remember, within the framework of this history of the formation of the African Union, there were two uh, uh, ideologies. Okay. That was the, the Casablanca group and then the Morovia group. The Casablanca group believed that independence must come and must come what? No. Now. And it was led <coughs> by Osajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. They had other supporters like uh, 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 Abdul Gamal Abdel Nizer of Egypt. He had a secretary of uh, Guinea. He had, uh, um, uh, of course, Patrice Lumumba of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Congo. Then the second group that also wanted independence, but wanted it gradually, was the one we call the Morovia, Morovia group. group, headed by His Imperial Maj Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia. They believed that there was the need for what? Liberation of the African continent, politically and economically. But they did not believe that there was the need to what? Radically get it Gets done. Get it, yeah. All right. So then after the two groups agreed that they wanted a common thing, independence, except that the ideology was what? Different. How they wanted it was different. The approach to it. The approach to it was different. So in 1963, okay, 30 countries, Converged in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, on the 25th of May, 1963. That was where the organization of African Unity, Unity was founded. And subsequently, in September the same year, the charter that commenced its operation was signed by 32 African, what? 32. African states. states. So that is how the organization of Africa unity evolved evolved I see. and then then we have uh, it has now metamorphosed into uh, mm -hmm. the african union which was uh okay. over it, it we'll, was co we'll come back to you okay. mr yes. bikui do you have much. any I more think, uh, he's spoken very well yeah. so brilliant he knows, knows what he's talking about sure but sure. just to add that for the casablanca group or the block yeah the intent was to give or establish a supranational political body so that nations that had gained independence were going to give up their political or uh, give up their nationalism no, yeah. so that we have a political head. Okay. So you give out your autonomy to a new central, a central head body. Kind of, yeah. And okay. everybody feared that maybe because Kwame Nkrumah was a national, Nkrumah was going to head the United States of Africa. Africa. Yeah. Hence the opposition. But then the Moravian bloc has said no. Independence is independence. We want to promote nationalism, but we want to integrate gradually through perhaps economics, trade, and then find some common cultural ideology. So these are the few that I want to add to okay. what my brother said. Okay, okay. So we know that in 2001, the OAU was officially rebranded to from Organization of African Unity to African Unity. Why the change, Mr. Awa? Well, I do think that a number of ideas drops into my mind with okay. this question. Perhaps one was to be consistent with international benchmarks. For okay. instance, their colleague in the Europe is called European what? Union. Union. Okay. So if their ideologies are in line with their various continents, so why would we not call ourselves the African what? Union. Union. Number two, Africa, as at 2002, had gained political independence okay. in almost every corner Country. of what? Africa. the continent yeah. so the main objective of the oau which amongst others was political independent was already achieved so maintaining oau would have meant that you have achieved 
a goal, yet you are still thinking of that particular what? <laughs> goal. No, okay. All right. Which I do think that is one of the reasons why there was the need for rebranding. Okay. Number three, literature reveals that another reason why the OAU, the AU, the OAU ch was changed to AU was that it wanted to be more inclusive, bringing in civil society what? Organizations. organizations. And I see that today in uh, ECOSOC, Economic, Social, and Cultural uh, uh, Committee. Co uh, uh, I think it's Commission or Committee of, uh, of uh, the African Union. Okay. So they, <laughs> they did it as a result of some deep reasoning. The rebranding re didn't come out of a blue. It was done to reflect current what times. I know a number of arguments have come up over the time that the name would have still remained as Organization of African Unity. Unity. Yet, the clauses that were intended to be added could be added to still give it what meaning. meaning but I do not go with that reasoning. I do not go with that reasoning because the Organization of African Unity had achieved some of the main objectives that it was set up to what? achieve. And one of the key was political independence. And if that is gone, then one face of the African continent was what? Done. Done. That is political independence. So there was another face which included involving every st strata of Africa's population, ensuring economic what? independence, okay. although we had gained some part of it by strengthening and then building on the gains. Yeah. So I do think that it was in order. Well, okay, Mr. Bekwe, um, it's, to me, it's just a name, Organization of African Union. It's just a name. Do you think the, the change in the ideologies or the addition of some um, new ideology, do you think it's, it's had an effect or the change in name had an effect on it? Because if we say it's because they had achieved a phase, so does it mean that if AU, the now AU achieves a phase, they will change it to another name? I don't yeah, know the effect. I think Fred has actually mm, said what, what needs to be said. Mm. But we also have to bear in mind that the OAU was formed basically for three things. First is to fight colonialism and then protect the sovereignty of the new states and also to keep these new African states from joining the East and West Bloc yeah. during the era of the Cold War. So if all of these have been achieved, and we are looking beyond, what do we do? Because the charter that established the Organization of African Unity has spelled these ones out, and these have been achieved. Besides, there were certain clauses in the charter that were irrelevant because the charter or the OAU was more or less kind of a, they say, dictator's club. Okay. It was protecting the interests of only the political leaders, but not the citizenry. There was the clause of non-interference in the affairs of a nation. Yeah, so people like Idi Amin in the 1970s, could mete out human rights abuses yeah. on its uh, citizens or, or, or on Ugandans. But the OAU was powerless. It could not interfere in the member country's internal affairs. affairs. Okay. There were internal conflicts as well. There was no standing army of the OAU that could, you know, come in to intervene. Again, the OAU was not bringing in the civil society, as my brother first said. It could not integrate Africa through economic means. And women, children, and the youth were marginalized. So that meant that a new charter needed to be drafted. And this idea was mooted in, Liberia, in, in Libya, okay. in a, a, a city called Set. And on the 9th of September, 1999, the late Colonel Muammar Gaddafi brought up the idea which was agreed upon by the leaders who met there to form a new African body called the African, African Union. Union. Huh. 
the African Union. Yes. All right, we'll go on a quick break, and when we come back, we'll look at the successes and the challenges of the African Union. Please stay tuned. In case you just joined us, this is AAU Talks on AAU TV, and we are, we are discussing or we are talking about AAU, the history and its challenges and successes. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, we know that, okay, in 1964 to 1965, the OAU recorded some um, successes, and one of them was being a successful mediator in the border dispute between Algeria and Morocco. Um, the now AU, do they or have they been able to achieve any success? Now, before we even talk about the now AU, I think we should still stick to the discussion of, of the, the OAU. OAU. Okay. There were some successes that were choked by the then OAU, OAU. regime. Yeah. If for nothing at all, the formation of the organization alone, itself, the structure alone is what a AU is now what hinging In general. for the pros prosperity and peaceful development of our continent, Africa. Now, we can also talk about the issue of ending of the apartheid regime. Yeah. Okay. We all know of the issues of South Africa and how there was white suppression of the blacks. It took the organization of African unity to mobilize forces and then also do uh, uh, train people from different parts of Africa to fight in different wars in what? Other Africa. parts of Africa and specifically in, uh, in South Africa. Yeah. They are continual <coughs> advocacy at the heads of state meetings. Uh, solidarity with uh, Nelson Mandela, even whilst he was in prison for 27 years, cannot be underestimated. Sure. So there was actually some level of uh, commitment that they made towards the end of the apartheid regime. It is also important that uh, we recognize the fact that they do not have a standing army, OAU and then AU. 
my good friend Rasford hinted of has of that earlier. But mm. however, <coughs> the OAU had blocks like ECOWAS, SADC, and ECOWAS had an army, okay. ECOMOG, okay, yeah. the Economic okay. Monitoring, uh, ECOWAS Monitoring Group. And of course, within the West African sub-region, a lot of conflicts that needed military intervention. Okay. The AU, OAU through ECOWAS, showed face. We can talk about the, 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 the uprising in, uh, in Liberia. Liberia, yeah. Okay. Ecomog was in there. And credit definitely can go to what? The OAU okay. for that role that they, they played. played. Uh -huh. That a block yeah. had a, an army that could help liberate a country in their time of need. need. There, there are a lot of instances of a ref settlement of refugees. Okay. Okay, that the AU initiated. Okay. Okay, we can talk about Ghana hosting refugees from Liberia. Oh. It is part of uh, the arrangements of the Organization of African What? Unity. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some of the achievements that I can talk about in the days of OAU. And even now, no. AU is still making gains. Uh, the free movement of what? People. Uh, in recent times, the African common trade area was agreed by African what? Heads of states. Okay. Today, you can get up and then go to Rwanda without a visa. Those are all achievements of what? The Organization of African, African Union, Union and its successor union, the African Union. Yeah, these but are the few. Why, why I think the visa thing you talked about, it's still selective. It's not in all countries in Africa that you can go without a visa. I know like in um, Botswana, you need a visa, I think South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. You know, development, uh, it's always in phases. Yeah. Okay. Times back, any African going to another African country you needed have. a visa. Wow. But now it is not so. At least you can move freely within some countries. For the ECOWAS region, once you are an ECOWAS citizen, you can move freely. Yeah. Now that extension is going what higher. Uh, Namibia yeah. followed suit about two years ago. Uh, Zimbabwe, as far as uh, as far as 2014. If you're a Ghanaian, you could go into Zimbabwe without what? A visa. visa. Okay. Uh -huh. And I think this is now taking a larger toll as evidenced in the African uh, uh, common trade area that was uh, agreed upon uh. within this period. Okay. Under the watch of uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame. Oh, Kagame. Of, uh, Rwanda. Rwanda. Okay. Mr. Bekui, yeah. you have, do you have more to add to well, the success? Let me also say that the um, OAU yeah. achieved quite a lot, given the fact that its formation was during the era where the West was fighting the East, East. ideologically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the, the significant things that the OAU did was to establish the African Development Bank to integrate in, um, Africa through trade. Yeah. And with the ADB, okay. there was also a rethinking of establishing the African Investment Bank, the African Central Bank. Okay. These ones are to be picked up by the African Union. So even the ADB alone, the formation of the ADB alone, and then in 1980, in Lagos, in April, yeah. there was a Lagos Plan of Action for Development. And that 10-year uh, plan was to help integrate the continent economically. After that came the 1991 Abuja Treaty, establishing the African Economic Community. Okay. And they gave themselves a 30-year plan. Mind you, these were not during the era of the African Union, but the Organization of African Unity. Unity yeah. So this, now we don't want to integrate faster politically like the Casablanca block were advocating, advocating but yeah. we want to do it through Good trade well. okay so I said within 30 years let's establish regional blocks the regional economic communities and then let the regional economic communities integrate okay and then from that regional integration we will now have a universal 
integration. Integration, okay. So currently there are about eight regional economic communities of which ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, is one. Is one. We have the SADC, we have the East African community, okay. we have the Arab Maghreb Union. You see, these are all regional blocks. 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 And within which regional blocks, they are integrated. For instance, within ECOWAS, we are shooting towards a common currency. The African Union envisages that eventually we will come out with a common African currency called the Afro. Okay. But to do that, we have to strengthen the Each regional region. structures. Yeah, yeah. So despite some of the failures that the OAU chopped, they also had a vision. Yeah. And that vision had been carried on. By the African Talking Union. about the failures, it's, it's, um, the OAU proved less effective in an attempt to halt the um, civil wars um, in Nigeria within, I think, 1968 to 1970. The, are, there, are there other challenges the OAU faced in that, that yes, period? Or the even OAU like was <coughs> always facing ideological challenges. challenges. Okay. They were the pro-socialists led by the Nkrumah group, and we had the, the capitalist led by the leader of Bwanyi of La Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. And beside that, there were those who were leaning too much to the east, too much to the west, and there were those who were eyeing each other. You know, the political ideology that let's have a united Africa, a United States of Africa with a political head, and those who say no, mm -hmm. we want a nationalist, but strengthen African countries. So these ideologies did not bring these nations together. Mm. And I think we're still having these same challenges. Look at the European Union. Despite a few disintegration that is taking place, you yeah. see how united that they are. Look at the United States of America. They are united. Sure. Do we have a United States of Africa? Africa? Mm. We are having African Union. Union. Yes, we, we do have the Union, but yeah, how united, united is the Union? Union. We are taking a gradualist approach. I like the Nkrumah's radical approach, who said, Africa must unite. And at the day of independence, like uh, my brother first said that, the political independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it leads to the total liberation of the African continent. And the liberation is you being liberated from your colonial masters. You see Anglophones having strong ties with Britain. Francophones having ties with France. But intra-country or inter-country trade in Africa has so many blocks. Sure. When we need technology, we don't dialogue among ourselves. Go we go out. to the West or to the East. We wanted to build the African Union complex, the one that we have in Addis Ababa. And who built the, the complex? If we were united, would we have asked China to oh. build the complex for us? No. We would have done it ourselves because we have the resources. We have the manpower. We have the technology. But we allowed a foreign country to do that for us. And way back in January this year, a newspaper called Le Monde even alleged that the whole complex, which is 99.9 .9 meters from the ground, having about 2,500 seating capacity, huh. was bagged by the Chinese. Wow. Do, do we still say we have our independence, political and economic <laughs> independence? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves. So, so for now, to you, the major um, challenge is unity. We are not united. I am a radical like Nkuma. the late Nkrumah. <laughs> okay. We need to hasten that unity. Okay. We know the structures are there within the African Union. But how do we implement? It's one way. Uh, one thing to develop policies 
is another thing to implement policies. Okay. Mr. Awa, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, in my own opinion, I think another challenge the organization is facing is the inability to combat um, African conflicts in order to move ahead to start looking at or addressing disasters, natural disasters. What do you think about that? Well, that is just one of them. Maybe mm. let me hit on it. Yeah, yeah the inability of um, the OAU, now yeah. AU, OAU now to AU. have done what you are saying, that is... Uh, African conflicts. Uh, no, uh, or ha ha no, handling African conflict conflicts is our inability, or the OAU's inability to have a standing what? Okay. Army. Okay. Because if there is an issue in one given part of what? Africa. It is expected that the AU, after mediation has failed, would move yeah. in with what? A force. Yeah. Uh, but uh, having said this, I think that the West African region has over, over time done this on behalf of what? The, the AU. AU, when it comes to the West African sub-region. Okay. Even in recent times in Gambia, it took ECOWAS to go in so that Jamel would what? Move Stay out down. so that yeah. Barrow would rule. But I want, that, I want to look at the issues of uh, the challenges of the OAU then okay. as this. One was the issue of Repre uh, repressive, repressive governments. Okay. <laughs> All of those who were speaking Pan Africanism, including our own Osajefu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, wanted to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They were trying, in one way or the other, to make the constitutions favor them to stay for long. Yeah. You can talk of Osajefu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you can go to Nyasaland, now Malawi, Hastings, Kamus, Banda. He tweaked the constitution to favor him, to make him a lifetime what? President. President. And in many parts of Africa then, most of them virtually were becoming a one party what? State. Yeah. You can talk of Th Tanzania and Nyerere. <laughs> Until he died, there was no other president. You can talk about um, uh, Nze Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya. Until his, he died, no there was opposition. no president. Okay, oh. you can talk of Hastings Kamuzubanda until his 90s. He lost power a few years before he died. Okay, so one of the issues was the issue of repressive because if you are, if the intention is to what? Unify Africa. Then you should open governance to all and sundry. So the issue of democracy was lacking and that was the first what? Challenge. The second was in season coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. But before you, you say that, I, yeah. I don't really agree with you then. Okay, okay. all right. Now, because um, during the early periods of independence, okay. the issue of leaning to the uh, east or west was so rife. You know, the Americans wanted to promote democracy. The, United, uh, the USSR wanted to promote socialism. Yeah, okay. And each... Uh, African country had to lean on to each. one of these ideologies. So for an incumbent in power, they needed to drive th their vision, their ideology, you understand? So that they would, they, they, they would court friendship with a, power. with a particular block, power, yeah. but indirectly also try to see if the other block <laughs> will come in with bigger favors. Okay. So that was the ideological war. So if they then wanted to stay in power for long, maybe we need to understand them. Currently, even under the African Union, don't we have Burundi trying to change its constitu constitution? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. Rwanda has done and it. You know, <laughs> yeah. to have its ten, president ten. to stay longer? Till 2034. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah, at yeah. Togo. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I understand the, the perspective from which you are coming from, but it doesn't make it right. What Nkuruziza did in Burundi, a lot of lives were lost. P uh, uh, people were what? Displaced. Are you getting it? Yeah. And that was what Africa Union, the early leaders of the African Union, began with. Yeah. So you can look at Burundi and Rwanda, neighbors, uh, it's almost same democratic what? Uh, demographic uh, uh, characteristics. Yeah, yeah. But Burundi is getting less developed by day. Mm 
because the regime is what? Repressive. And I think that that is the one of the reasons that thwarted the efforts of the African what? Union. Union. Yeah. But this is open for discussion because the ideologies are what? Different. Different yeah. The second that I identify is the issue of incessant coup d'etats. Kwame Nkrumah himself was removed through what? Coup d'etat. Yeah. Patrice Lumumba, his own lieutenant, uh, Mabutu Seseseku, mm -hmm. he, he, he appointed him as what? Head of the military removed him. When you come to upper, uh, upper Volta, Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. in 1984, there are about 84, 86, I'm not very sure. Uh, uh, um, Isidore, uh, Captain Thomas Sankara, yeah. he was removed mm -hmm. by his own right-hand man, man, Kampore. Are you getting it? So Even Nigeria too. There were a series absolutely. of coup d'etats. Coup d'etats in my own country, Ghana, Ghana. apart from, apart from uh, uh, Jerry John Rawlings came through a coup d'etat. Yeah. So that if the three of us have a plan for the continent, and then today we have a plan, the following day you are removed. Okay? It's, it's then the it plan is distorted. The, and then yeah. the two of us now, although we are still in, we rule in fear. Uh -huh. So it was affecting the structure okay. Okay. of the African world. Union. Another was the fact that a lot of the colonies were very weak financially. So they were still, although independent, they were leaning again um, on their colonial masters, masters that they fought to gain independence. What? From. Oh. And this was particularly so with the Francophone countries because France gave them the notion that they were still what? people from French, because mm -hmm. they had the, 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 the uh, from France, they, they had the principle of assimilation. assimilation yeah. Meaning that for as long as you koto to our dictates, yeah, we'll you had the same right as what? A French, a French person. Yeah. Unlike the British West Africa that was in direct rule, we were yeah. suppressed. Our chiefs were used giving umbrellas, giving snaps and salt, and mirrors. That. And then they sold our birthright yeah, to the white. So one of the issues that we had, the challenges that we had was weak territories who still relied on what? The, the colonial, colonial masters. Master. Apart from that, there was also the issue of the colonial masters infiltrating what? Africa, although Africa was supposed to be independent. independent. And because the African Union did not have the financial muscles, okay? to help member countries and then build itineraries and armies to be able to rescue African countries that were threatened, it also became a challenge for the, the African, African Union. Union. So these are the few issues that comes to mind yeah, regarding yeah. the weaknesses and challenges of, of, uh, um, the, of the African, African Union. Union. Oh, I can the organization okay. of African Union. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, organization, organization of African, African Union. Unity. Uh -huh. yeah. And it doesn't look too different today. Yeah. Because uh, take for instance, uh, the, like my colleague uh, Ransford said, if we say that we want to be independent, independent of colonial rule, yeah. independent of Western powers, independent of external uh, uh, intrusion, it means that we must take responsibility for our own affairs. Yeah, yeah. So that if I want to be independent of you, I want to sleep and I say provide a house for me, then that is the beginning of failure. So that you go to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, there is a very big edifice. Complex. You ask, African governments have done well. They have built this by themselves. Then they, you are told, no, yeah, it's it was China. built by what? The, China. the Chinese. <laughs> that alone tells yeah. you that even where you sleep, it's not safe. It's, it, it, it's, it's not, not yours. safe. My colleague has just yeah. hinted that there are there are rumors yeah. that the entire place has been bagged. So there's no confidentiality. There's no level of what secrecy. Secret, yeah. So I think that. Uh, uh, what trans uh, transpired in the past hasn't changed so much in today. this new yes EU. Uh, yeah All right, well so. I think um, but then we have new structures that is true okay. new structures that have been built that's true that would help us to attain what the African Union said we should that is the Africa we want by the year 2063. I'll, come, I'll uh, come to that in 2063. I think I do even have a challenge with that agenda. Okay, that, that so strategy, we'll, strategy we'll, strategy we'll get to that. Before then, let's mm -hmm. look at the organs of the Organization of African Unity. Organs of the... Oh, you want to take that? Mm -hmm. so I'll just say, uh, speak briefly. Okay. okay yeah. Well, uh, with the charter, we have about six or seven yeah. organs. Yeah. 
and the highest one is the Assembly of the African Union. That is made up of the heads of all member states okay. of the AU, and they meet twice a year, mostly in July, June, July, and then in January. Okay. So that is the highest decision-making body. Okay. But then we have the Secretariat, okay. which we call the African Union Commission. And then we have the Executive, Executive. Committee or Commission Council. Council, which is made up of the foreign ministers of all member countries. Okay. Yes. And okay. beyond the Executive Country, we have the Permanent Representative Council. Permanent Representative Committee. Or committees, mm. yes. This committee is made up of all ambassadors okay. of member countries in Addis. Okay, in then Addis. We, in Addis. Okay. Then we have the Peace and Security Council. They should be working. The they Peace are supposed and to be working. Security Council, they have, they will influence. Sure. When they recommend to the Assembly of the African Union, to have an intervention in a country, especially where there are excesses such as genocide or human rights abuses. <coughs> and they recommend to the, the assembly, it should be done. Sure, sure. Or most likely should be, should done. be done. Yes, and then we also have the, uh, the courts, the African Courts of Justice and Human Rights. Then we have the new partnership for Africa's development. Let me say that these are all not centered in Addis. Yeah. For instance, the, we, we have the African Parliament. South Africa. Yes, it is in Midrand, South Africa. Okay. The courts are in Banjou, the Gambia. Nepad is also in South Africa. But then it's the commission. When That's we say Africa, you know, mostly we only you know, dream or yeah, think yeah, about the, the AUC. Yeah, yeah. But that's, the, that's just the secretariat. You understand? That is in Addis. And then the other ones, those that are committees meet there yeah. or at appointed places. places. And then the, the, the other structures like the parliament, which is made up of 265 oh. members oh. from all member countries, they meet in South Africa. So is there any reason they decided to put their um, like different locations uh, like one in South Africa, one in Addis Ababa? Is it a form of like to make every country involved in it? Yes, because okay. it is an African Union. Union. So you can't just put one in yes. Addis Ababa. Just like the African Development Bank, the yeah. ADB. ADB. Yes, yeah. it used to be in Tunis. Then it came to Abidjan. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So you need to place them strategically Strategic. so that every, every country feels belonged or That's every exact. regional block feels they belong to, to the uh, union okay. as the common agenda. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Awa, you talked about, you, you went to, you, were, um, pa you participated in the Agenda 2 2063 organized by the AU. Can you tell us more about that? Well, the Agenda 2063 is the strategic vision of the African Union, yeah. uh, spanning from twi uh, 2013 to the year 2063. Okay. And the year 2013 was the 50th year of the establishment of the Organization of African, African Unity, Unity, which became the African Union. Okay. So 2013 was retrospect, looking at the past, the basis on which plans or a, a framework supposed to be drawn for what the future yeah. so it was the thinking of the past that informed the drafting of the agenda 2063 20 which was launched in addis ababa Ethiopia, in may 2013. i okay. was privileged to be there on behalf of the students of the continent okay. and the strategic doc document actually uh, proposes prosperity for africans by the year 2063. So every thematic area that uh, is in sync with prosperity and development have been captured by Fine. the strategic document. So health, education, nutrition, agriculture, uh, anything that has to do with uh, prospering Prosper. Africa. Yeah. So I think that uh, 
the document is fine, but uh, the approach within which the document was uh, promulgated is my challenge. Okay. I think that the wisdom that made the AU in 20, 2002 decide to change from OAU to AU, AU. because they wanted to involve what? Everybody Everyone inclusion. Uh, in, in Africa should have been the same principle that they would use in what? Seeking knowledge for that the document. promulgation of the vision 2063. Yeah. Now, why do I say so? I have known over time that if you are taking decisions for people without getting them involved, tendencies mostly is that the people do not understand and then there would be what? Resistance. Yeah. Now, a strategic document like Agenda 2063, in my opinion, is very long term. Yeah. So a majority of the constituents that were supposed to be involved should have been young people. The youths. Okay? Because they would drive they would drive the agenda the of change. Yeah. But unfortunately in twenty thirteen the entire place was filled with what? professors, ministers of education, minister of food, minister of, of science, people who are already getting to their retirement what? ages. Mm. The argument may be that they are experts and have a bigger understanding, but the reality also is that in other jurisdictions, to mentor people who would hold the destinies of the, the destiny of the continent, you must get them involved. involved. Now, I would give an example of students. I was privileged to be representing all of the students of the continent. Okay. I was invited for the launch, and there I sat in a panel discussion to talk about participation and engagement. And I was brutally frank with the African Union Commission that my presence there was a symbol of participation, not engagement. Engagement, okay. Because the strategic document that has to do with education has already been what? Document. Ha has yeah. already been inculcated in the Agenda okay. 2063. 63. What about the inputs of my constituents? I would have thought that right from the beginning, the All African Students Union representing students of the continent, maybe Pan African Youth Union representing youth of the continent, other bodies representing what? Different, Different segments. segments sec yeah. All right? Would have gone through the process of formulating the policy document. In that vein, an understanding at the overall level, for instance, students, the All African students, would inform how it is supposed to trickle down. The union says that the, to understand Vision 2063, there is the need for the formation of campus clubs. Okay. Are we together? Now, which group is best positioned to form campus clubs on the continent of Africa? I don't want to answer it. Definitely, it's the students, well, I university I students. I, I really don't okay. agree I entirely agree. with my brother Fred. Okay. To the extent that when you are developing a strategic plan, you don't involve, even though you need to bring representatives, you don't bring the whole student body. The argument is not the student body, the representatives. But the student body is represented huh. by ECOS, uh, ECOSOC, the Economic uh, Cultural uh, Commission of the Social. African Union. Yeah. Definitely, there would have been consultation. That is not true. There would have been consultation. That is not true. The fact because that because ASU is a member of what? ECOSOC. Okay. So the so the so the, the, expe the expectations in for the, the, ASU. the expectations would have been that. So are we then now saying that ECOWAS uh, ECOSOC stood in for ASU without ASU's knowledge? Knowledge. And no, if, that, uh, if that if that is no, if that is the case, because hold on a minute. because if ECOSOC is supposed to speak for ASU, it will take inputs from what? Asu. Asu. And you anyway, as Asu say you were not, anyway, not informed. Ask, ask my brother whether then mm. Asu was politically united. Whether there were no breaks in the, in the front. Itself. But that aside. No, definitely. But no. that aside. Yes. The Agenda 2063 uh, document is just a policy framework. It says we need an integrated and what? Prosperous Africa driven by the citizens. Indeed. And in doing this, you are looking at a 50-year term. Yeah. But you don't just jump into the 50 years. You need some action plans. So they say, we have given you this agenda, framework. Each country 
take it back and develop implementation plans and report on these every year. Beside that, it's also not a holistic thing. It says, just beyond being a holistic, it says we have Decada action plans. For instance, we have the Continental Education Strategy for Africa, which is part of the Agenda 2063. So it is for this CESA document that nations and countries need to now take it back to their countries, develop action plans. This is education, that you take it to the students. How many students know about this, Cesar? No, that it, apart, this brings us back to what we discussed earlier. Okay. Do you know the very reason why the AAPC wa was formed by John Cully in 1958? John Cully, in his wisdom and his reasoning, did indicate that it was not enough to use only national what? Structures. Okay. Civil society organizations. That is that Koso. No, 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 no. No, civil the society. The wider consultation was yes. done. You have been given a broad framework. Yes. It says go and implement. Absolutely. And so the implementation is where you bring in the civil society. Yeah. No, 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 no. Before you implement, there is the need for stakeholder consultation. Now, if a stakeholder doesn't understand, I, 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 would, I would bring it from the student background. If a, st a stakeholder doesn't understand why a given policy is what? Promulgated. Yeah. There will be resistance. Sure. Now, let me give you an example. When you look at, when you do a holistic uh, uh, study of the student movements in Africa, okay. in countries where students are involved in decision making, strikes are low. Do you know why? It is because they understand the policy before it comes out, because so they made contributions. Yeah. So Ghana, for instance, students are represented at, uh, at uh, university council, council levels, okay. national yeah. levels, un, un, uh, the National Union of Ghana Students is represented at the GET Fund, okay. Student Loan Trust Fund, Ghana AIDS Commission, National Youth, uh, na uh, the National Youth Authority. So before any policy, national policy on students yes. or youth yeah, comes yeah. out, the National Union of Ghana Students is so what aware. aware. So they may be resist uh, wherever there is resistance, it may be what limited, limited because yeah. they have an understanding. Yeah. But go to a lot of the countries where students are looked at as children, the yeah. paternalia. Uh, but an holistic kind of reasoning in Africa where students' decisions yeah. must be made for yeah. them. Yeah. In such instances, there is always breaks in semesters. You know why? Because when the stakeholder does not feel involved or engaged or consulted, what happens Definitely is that there will be resistance. resistance. So we can say yes, ECOSOC. So now let's look at it from this pers perspective. But, but, uh, no, Fred, let, let, me, let me just land before you come in. Let me, let, let me, is is let is not a political statement. It is not it political. Is all no, look at the aspirations. Mm. I do understand. And the aspirations are students' uh, perspective has a women, has diseases. Absolutely. So but why don't you just pick an aspiration mm -hmm. and disseminate it to your constituents? That is the that, that is where the challenge comes in. It is not a As challenge. Me, it's a policy no, no, document. No, no, no. It's policy, guiding you. Policy documents are promulgated it's you. with the people in what? In mind. Mm, okay. Are you yes. getting it? So now you say there must be campus what? Clubs all over Africa. Who is best placed to do that? It's the, a student. The, the students. Students. And the overaching body of the students of the continent is the All African Students Union. They were not part of the decision making what? process. And unless otherwise you want to tell me that ECOSOC is not effective because if ASU is a member of ECOSOC, and I do not know Anyway, I don't <laughs> think we are discussing <laughs> ASU here. No, I'm using All it right. as an example. A physical because one that is ASU verifiable. ASU is just a civil society, just like many <coughs> other civil societies. Absolutely. But okay. when it comes to education, it is the overaching body where it comes Education is yeah, a ministry, yeah. ministry of education. No, where so it you so running on behalf of but of those the student body so on behalf of so that is a for national structure. That is a so national you feel structure. that the Ministry <laughs> of Education was represented there and they should deliver or bring it to so their the constituents. So you think, so you think okay. that Ghana Ministry of Education has the mindset of the, the, all of the students, students of the continent? We no. are not talking about okay. Ghana. We are talking about an overarching framework. Maybe you don't know what and what went in into developing the agenda. I do know, except but that we were not consulted. processes yes. were so long and so laborious that at the end of the day, they didn't come out with minute details it was of what is to be done. It was not they exhausting. giving you a no, broad framework. No, no, no. What is to be done, they have. It's they have. They have come out with a framework which clearly indicates what is supposed to be what? 
to be done. Yeah. But as to whether what they propose for the entirety of the continent is what the continent wants, it's an issue. Because the reality is, I am speaking from the perspective of an organization from which I have ever led. led. Yeah. And I realized that there was a lapse there. So you there was a lapse. Uh, Going we'll, forward, we'll, you need to correct we'll it. We'll go on a break. That, 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 we'll <laughs> correct. that means the implementation. Yeah. Yes. That is where you have a say, a bigger all right. say. All right. you know, but the thing we're fighting the about the broader... All right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll have to go on a break here. We'll have to go on a break. Okay, uh, viewers, in case you just joined us, this is AU Talks, and we've been talking about um, the Organization of African Union. Please join us in our last segment. I feel so confident. Uh, the reason why I feel so confident, it's not because of maybe the courses just that I've been doing. I feel like I can do anything that I want to do. If you tell me to do something, even if I, I don't know how to do it, I'll learn, I'll take my time, I'll study hard, I'll probably not sleep for a month, but I'll do it because that's what Carnegie Mellon University have taught me to work hard, to read hard, to spend more hours doing research, and then at the end of the day, you actually see the results of what you've been looking for. It's very important not to uh, be like uprooted from the ecosystem, so like your, the network that you've built and things like that. And what happens if you move maybe to the US for some time? You sort of cut off from this uh, your network so uh, it's important to have studied in africa because uh, that way you can maintain your network uh, of, of business people that you work with so for example i run a small business where i work with various people and if for if they wanted to get to have new projects to do with me if i was not in africa they would not get in touch with me for me the one of the key things was the exposure that i got so the one of them was working for ibm uh, in Nairobi, uh, that was something that probably would never have happened if I'd never have gone to CMU. We are excited about the future of East Africa and our role in educating the next generation of African leaders. This is just the beginning. Come back. Please remember that you can follow this conversation. You can drop your comments, your questions on our Facebook page at Association of African Universities or follow us on our Twitter handle at AAU underscore 67. Back to our gentlemen. Um, the, the argument has been very, very heated. What's your role, Mr. Um, what do you think the role of the youth um, is in this agenda 2063? I do think that the entire Agenda 2063 is about the youth and even yeah. people who are below the youth brackets. Yeah. Because we are talking about 50 years. 50 years, which we have already covered five, so 45 years to come. come. Okay. By then, perhaps some of us will not be alive because mm -hmm. the avri average uh, Life uh, lifespan you. of an African is 60 years. Mm. Uh -huh. So you can imagine, even if you are 20 years today, plus another 45 mm. would have given you 65. So if our statistics about lifespans in Africa is anything good to go by, it means that by then a lot of retirees would have been dead and gone. Sure. So the strategic plan is actually for the youth. It is in line with this that I think that the African Union, every well-meaning organization on the face of the continent that wants prosperity for the continent must move from bringing youth to participate, but rather let them get engaged Okay. Now, the difference is that participation is you just form the thing and say, okay, let's bring representative of the youth just for the purposes of the cameras. And this is what I do think happened to the All African Students Union okay. in the year 2013 when the launch of the African Union's Vision 2063 was done. I just went there and it was my first time, my union was there, and I had to share a few words without historic what? Participation. So I do think that there should be what? Involvement, uh, involvement of the youth or engagement of the youth in every strata of decision making on the face of the continent. And this starts not only at the AU level, but individual African what? Countries. countries okay. Decision making. Do not move youth away in the name of their being violent. Well, yeah. Whatever, with my experience with leading youth on the face of the, uh, the continent, what you say an African youth is, is what he becomes. Sure. When you say they are responsible, they behave responsibly. When you say they are irresponsible, 
then they want to prove to you that what you have said about them is what? True. True. So you realize that vice chancellors and university administrators that have brought SRC leadership close to them mostly have stable what? Administrations. Okay. Those who tag them as rooks and then do not want to bring them close always have resistance. So I think yeah. that especially so when the, st the youth of the con continent represent over 65% of the, count, uh, the continent's population, meaning the largest strata of the continent's population, there is the need to engage them. Okay. Countries like Uganda have done this. They know that young people have ideas but do not have what? Funding. And it's very popular within the East African bloc. They give representation to what? Youth in parliament. Do you know what that, what that does? They inculcate the political leadership. training in you yeah. at that's because they know that if they want you to compete with mainstream politicians, you will not be able to do because Stop. you don't have what? Finances. Yeah. So that is an example of youth what? Engagement. Okay. So we do think that this should be replicated at all levels. I must also commend the Association of African Universities. Okay. Uh, since before I became Secretary General of the All African Students Union, and even when I was consistently, any time there was a program, Okay, or any discuss that has to do with higher education in Africa. The Association of African University brought us in. Are you getting it? Yeah. Take for instance, Tuning Africa, the policy yeah. advisory group. Through the AAU, the All African Students Union, was represented for four good years, mm -hmm. deliberating on issues that has to do with a lot of uh, the contents of higher education on the face of our continent. That is what we call youth engagement. engagement and i think that going forward african union should be doing that That's okay. rather than calling us to participate, participate in alone okay um, mr mr yes, i think um, i w agree with him to okay, some extent, extent okay that yes we need to engage the youth because they are our current and future leaders, leaders yeah but um the youth is not only those who are in education his focus is on just 5% of the entire population. Because those in higher education are just about 5%. But what about those out there in the streets? Well, That's how yes. come I said that there are other structures that speak on behalf of the youth. And I mentioned ECOSOC to embody everybody, to embody those in kindergarten up to the university and post um, degree I level. think you are yeah. getting something wrong somewhere. With ECOSOC's representation from those from the kindergarten to the universities, it is factored through what? Also. The All African Students Union. Because mm -hmm. ECOSOC itself is a conglomeration of uh, civil society what? Organizations. Organization. And civil societies are not just students. No, but when it comes to the so student part of it, that so we are saying that. Let me say that mm -hmm. talking about the youth is holistic. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not because we even not because academics no, 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 no. alone. But yes. I think I did mention Pan-African Youth Union here. You there did. is an over 18 you body. Did, but mm -hmm. your, your attempt to just drive this student agenda straight into into this discussion. It is, is a cost I'm trying it's to a constituent yes, it's yes, a constituent you, you that the African it is, Union it is, wants but to empower. You are only talking about five percent of the entire population. I'm not I'm saying that. I'm not sure of now the framework is there. It is the implementation that matters. Yes. It's not fighting about who came on board to develop what. Let's get to the ground. The challenge is the Let's challenge is that people will not work because if they, they were not involved. Understand that is the fundamental no. of it. it. No, that is if the fundamental because because tr truth is no, concepts it, it, it's, must it's be like co concepts, a militancy. Concepts must be drawn based on what the understanding of those who you you constitute. have representatives who have developed a policy for the youth. Who are the representatives? So why Mr. don't Lanko? you just look at the policy? Yeah. Who are the representatives? <laughs> this, and this then just. <laughs> Get yourself at the country level, this at the at the uh, you know institutional level. Get yourself imbibe what is in there, and then develop 
plans of action to implement this it line of towards the ag agenda. This line of argument replayed way back in 1958, like I told you. Ransford is talking about national structures. It was in recognition of the fact that national structures alone cannot liberate Africa from its current state of what? Challenges. That people like John Kelly of Uganda. So who, so who oh, implements we, we have to move. We have to move away Everyone from this in one. Africa. And, and um, everyone, so you just move in and pick Mr. Ransford. No, based on structure. So when it is structure. So Mr. Ransford. Yeah, Mr. Ransford. Yeah, so how do we implement Mr. Ransford. If you don't understand. No, no. That is where the resistance comes. Mr. Ransford. So it means the resolution changes. In 2013. So it means that the structure Yeah, we have to end this specific one. The structure is not flawed. You didn't involve the relevant stakeholders. We have to end this specific one. Mr. Ransford. And the youth are not only represented. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Ransford. Not represent educated youth. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Ransford. Okay. Yeah, the please. In is the intellectual wing of Mr. Ransford, the youth. in 2018. <laughs> and the intellectual wing is also represented by the ministries of education. And Mr. Ransford, Ransford, yeah, we are we are, we are done with this. We are done with the agenda 2063. We are done with the agenda 2063. Lastly, in um, 2013, the heads of state came together to adopt this declaration of silencing guns with the tag silencing guns by 2020. How feasible is this? Well, if um, we have vociferous groups like ASU mm -hmm. trying to shoot down such a brilliant idea, how will we achieve this? Okay, now I do not speak as um, a current Secretary General. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I have, I'm, sa I'm saying does not represent the voice of ASU now because I don't lead them any longer. Okay. But the reality is that I just want to take a, a bite on what uh, Ransford just said. said. Now, brilliant documentations have always originated from the continent of Africa. Policies, Africa has always been good at what? Drafting policies. Yeah. That but is not true. Uh, let's true. let him let him finish. <laughs> we <laughs> want the talk. No, I said that we are not well resourced. No, okay, no, but who okay. must resource you? Because you you liberated yourself. So, so you should be ready for the yes, um, resource. Yes. Are the leaders, leaders not? The leaders are they not Africans? Are they Europeans? Mr. So can, can you continue, Fred? So now the reality is that yeah. Africa has always had what good policies, but the policies mostly are not consultative enough because it is not bottom up. Up, it is. Down. down. They make the policy and you are supposed to just adhere. And that is and the problem of what and in policy, the most effective policies the world over are bottom what? Up. That is when people from the grassroots are involved. Because the truth is that it's a pyramid. The lower is higher and then the top is small. Yeah. Are you yeah. getting it? So if the small take decisions, critical decisions for the masses, who do not understand, there will be revolts. Sure. Are you getting it? So having said that, I want to talk about the issue of... Um, the uh, guns, silencing guns. the guns. Silencing the guns. Silencing the gun is going to be possible if the African Union is strong at controlling its members, at letting them do the right word, things. Okay. If in this day and time, we still have persons like Nkurunziza sitting in Burundi and presiding over the issues of what? Burundi. When the constitution said, two terms, he finished it. The issue of termization came. Many lives were what? Lost. Yes. Now, an erroneous uh, referendum has come out saying that Nkurunziza can rule up to 20 what? 34. Hmm. You think well-meaning persons in Burundi are stooges? Tendencies are that they will be thinking. Uprising. What this man is doing is not right. Democracy cannot get him out. What should we do? Cool. We must pick up guns and what? Cutlasses. So, beyond the words, actions must what work. If we want guns to be out of our system, then we must eschew dictatorship and tyrannical rule. Sure. What should go for us is the issue of what democracy. Democracy in all of its forms. If it is two terms, and you would go after the two terms, get out of the scene because the country is not your personal asset. Sure. But if you want guns to be out of Africa, and then dictatorial regimes are still upheld. It is unfortunate. It will not happen. happen. Please, your last words, Mr. Ransom. My, my last word is that we are Some walking seconds. the talk. Okay, we are. We are walking the talk. Okay. I would have preferred a more radical approach, like he wrapped up beautifully, that when you have dictatorial regimes, 
the African Union must step in immediately. But then also leave the destiny of countries within the hands of their citizens. But should you uh, have elements of human rights abuses, then the African Union has the right to step in. Mm. So if the people of Burundi say they want their president to stay forever, forever who are uh, we, the, the, the observers, yeah, to, to say no? Should, yeah. We agree. What is essential is good governance and the rule of law. That is all. Okay. Mr. Ewa. Last I think that few seconds. I, I think that Africa can be a better place to live if all stakeholders identify and understand their responsibilities and work towards what achieving the strategic aim and vision of the African Union. In doing this, the African Union has a responsibility. The ordinary civil society organizations have their responsibilities. National governments also have their what? Responsibilities. responsibilities. But the overaching responsibility lies on the African Union to let people understand what they stand for and also on the basis of that encourage people to play their roles towards making Africa a prosperous, a prosperous one. one. Without that, Africa will always talk without implementing. Example being the AU campus clubs. We have more than 50 African countries but as I speak today, it is important to inform that only a few of the clubs do exist. exist. And let me inform further that in the year 2016, when Madame Dlamini Zuma was still the chairperson, mm -hmm. at our African Students and Youth Conference, she sent down her representative on her behalf for the students of the continent. And the All African Students Union proposed that by virtue of the fact that we are the over aching body of all of the students of the continent, we had a mandate and a responsibility of being able to what? Create the campus clubs on behalf of the African Union. We did an official letter. Till date, there hasn't been response. So if you put in a blueprint indicating that you want to move in a certain direction and there are foot organizations that are willing and able by their mandate to help you achieve it. It is important you support them sure. to achieve it. Sure. My final words. Wow, thank you. Thank you very gentlemen. Thank it's you. been a very insightful session here in the studio. We know we need to walk the talk and uh, we need to involve the youth. There has to be youth inclusion. Please stay tuned for more informative programs here on the AAU TV. This, was a, this is AAU Talks and I am Ioa Joni Queer. Bye. Bye.